Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at count evens, and this is an array 2 problem, and we're looking at the Java solution. So we're into arrays 2 now, which means that all our solutions have loops in them. And when I think about arrays and loops, or strings and loops, I think about this fundamental, what I call a bread and butter algorithm. And it looks like this. 4 int i equals 0. i is less than nums.length and i is equal to i plus 1. So let's break this down a little bit. And this would be our loop code. So essentially what this loop does is it starts at i is 0, which is, you know, the first element in an array, and it will continue as long as i is less than nums.length. So it won't reach nums.length, it has to be less than nums.length in the loop to run. Which works out well, because if we remember, an array has a length, and the last index is always the length minus 1. So here we have a length of 5, and we see that the last index is 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the question that comes up inevitably is, question is, when do I use a loop and an array? And the answer to that is, do you have to look at every element? So let me explain that. This problem states return the number of even ints in a given array. And they say, note, the mod operator computes the remainder, e.g. 5 bond 2 is 1. And I'll talk about that in a second. So if we look at this, and we say here, we say that there is, you know, if we get this array, we have three even elements. And I can see that really quickly, 2, 2, 4, done. Here, I have three even elements, 2, 2, 0. I remember, 0 is an even number. And here, I have zero even elements. And a lot of times when I work with students, they look at these and just give me the numbers. And I say, okay, now let's imagine that this list is a million elements long. How would you do this? And sure enough, eventually we get to that answer where they would say, I would point at each element in sequence and say, are you even? Yes or no. Are you even? Yes or no. And as soon as, I, I, as, soon as you realize you have to do that, you see that a loop is, is necessary. All right, so now how would we do this? Well, I'm going to start off by creating an integer called count. And this is going to keep ca count of how many even values I found. So, of course, I have none. And I'm just going to return count for now. And I see that I get 0 every time, which is right, two times. Great. So now in here, I have to write the code to check if each element is even. And to do that, I'm going to loop through every index. So for int i equals 0, remembering that the index is start at 0, i is less than nums.length, and i is equal to i plus 1. If you've been following along in some of my other videos, you'll hear me refer to this as the count the count, the check, the change. So essentially when I reach this loop, I set i to 0, and then I say is, is 0 less than the length, and if that's true, I enter the loop. When I reach the end of the loop, I increment it and do that check again. But now what has to happen in here? Well, I have to check if it's even or odd. And that's where the mod becomes really useful. Well, we know that even numbers are always divisible by 2, meaning that if I divide an even number by 2, I'll always have a remainder of 0. So I'm going to say if nums at i mod 2 is equivalent to 0. And so this is where our counter is becoming useful because i is going through every index, and so I'm going to take the value at that, you know, the value at the index i, and I'm going to mod it by 2. And if it's divisible by 2, that means the remainder will be 0, so nums i mod 2 is 0, and I simply just say count equals count plus 1. So I'm going to increment my counter by 1. And that's it. There you go. This is really important. I can't stress enough how important it is to understand this concept of a loop and an array. And I keep going back, a loop and a string, and a loop and a list, because it's the same principle for any of those structures. Now before I wrap up, let's just clean this up a little bit. For those of you that are interested, remember that this if statement has a single piece of code, with a single line of code with it, so I can remove these braces, and it works no problem. And this for statement has a single statement with it. This one's a little bit more confusing because it's just the way Java reads it is this if statement has a single line so it's associated with this and then the for statement the only line of code associated with the for statement is this if statement. I know when I work with students preparing for the AP exam this format sometimes gives them a little bit of a pause and it's good to be familiar with it. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.